Kamusta class? Ako si Sir Niro, your friendly teacher chemist, and this is another lecture video. Sa video na ito, lalaliman natin ang pagkaunawa natin sa chemical toxicity at kung paano tayo dito makakain. Samahan niyo ako. Tara! Welcome again to this video. This is still under Chemistry for Engineer, Chapter Chemical Safety, and the lesson is Chemical Toxicity. Dito, we will define chemical toxicity, identify the different types of routes to exposure, and differentiate acute and chronic toxicity. So first, we will define what is chemical toxicity. Chemical toxicity refers the ability to damage an organ system, disrupt a biochemical process, or disturb an enzyme system at some site remote from the site of contact. When we talk about chemical toxicity, these are substances that can damage our health. So, it can damage an organ system that may also cause uh, damage to our health, or biochemical process yung metabolism natin, or an enzyme system. Pag na-damage yung ating enzyme system, that will lead to a dysfunction sa ating katawan, which is still damage to our health. Pero paano nga ba nakakapasok ang mga chemical toxins nito sa ating katawan? There are actually four ways for these toxins to enter our body. And we call this one the routes to exposure. We have inhalation, injection, skin absorption, and ingestion. At iisa-isahin natin sila. Una is inhalation. Inhalation of toxic papers, mist, gases, or dust can produce poisoning by absorption through the mucous membrane of the mouth, throat, and lungs and can seriously damage these tissues by local action. There are certain substances that can produce vapors, mist, gases, or dust. And these substances may cause allergic reactions or uh, loss of breath. O yung uh, isisikip yung ating uh, daluyan ng hangin eh, that will lead more likely sa pagsikip din ng ating pagnya. Uh, this is the main reason bakit kailangan natin takpan yung ating ilong at ang ating bibig kapag tayo nasa laboratory para maiwasan natin na maka-inhale or makalanghap ng mga vapors, mist, gases, or dust that may be produced sa ating mga ginagawa experiments. It's also the main reason kapag uh, nag-release tayo kunwari ng bando at it's actually advised na magsuot tayo ng mask especially if we're using muriatic acid sa ating mga paglilinis. Kasi amoyat kasi can uh, produce uh, vapors or gases na medyo irritant sa ating respiratory tract. So, one way na makapasok yung mga toxins na yon or yung mga substance that can damage our health is through inhalation. Second way or second route to exposure is ingestion. Many of the chemicals used in the laboratory are extremely dangerous if they enter the mouth and are swallowed. This is the main reason kung bakit hindi tayo pumakain sa loob ng laboratory. Pinagbabawal ang pagkain o pag-inom ng inumin sa loob ng laboratory. Kasi there's a higher chance na ma-contaminate yung pinakain natin at dahil dito, malasok tayo. There's actually a meme about chemistry that Chemistry is just cooking without licking the spoon. Bakit? Kasi we are dealing with chemicals that are not to be eaten. They are, most of them are extremely dangerous. Isa sa mga ways to enter our body or routes to exposure is ingestion. The third routes to exposure is contact with skin and eyes. Skin and eye contact with chemicals should be avoided by use of appropriate protective equipment. 
take note, uh, may mga pores tayo sa ating skin. So, pwedeng pumasok dyan, tumago sa ating skin, yung ating mga, ilang mga chemicals, or pwede rin matalisikan yung ating mata. That's why we need to use appropriate protective equipment, or mga PPEs, tawag natin, personal protective equipment, para maiwasan natin na mak uh, makapasok sa ating katawan yung mga chemicals nito. That's why we use gloves for our hands. We use clothing na kahit paano matago yung ating mga skin. Then, we also use goggles or safety glasses kapag tayo ay nasa laboratory or gumagawa ng laboratory experiment. It's the, ma the main reason is protectahan yung ating mata from any splashes. So, this is the third. Crouch to exposure, contact with skin lines. Then, we have injection. It can inadvertently occur through mechanical injury from glass or metal contaminated with chemicals or when chemicals are treated in skin test. Now, uh, it's not probable actually na magpapa-inject tayo ng mga chemicals sa ating sarili, of course. Hindi siya basta-basta pwede mangyari unless papahintulutan natin. Pero sa workplace setting or sa laboratory, pwedeng mangyari yung injection. It's actually your chemicals or chemical toxins going going directly to your bloodstream. If ever, because of mechanical injury. For example, may nabasa yung glass. Tapos yung glass na yun that contains a certain chemical is also toxic. Tapos sinuwakan mo yung glass and because of that one, nasugatan ka. And some of those chemicals can go directly to also wound natin, to sa open wound. And that's actually an indirect injection. Although injection really is used by a lot of medical professionals to administer drugs or vaccines sa ating katawa. Kasi it's also one way so that chemicals can enter our body. So that's the fourth route to exposure injection. Meron din tayong tinatawag na acute and chronic toxins. So, ano nga ba pagkakaiba ng dalawa? Acute toxins can cause severe injury or death as a result of short-term high-level exposure. While chronic toxin cause severe injury after repeated exposure. So, ano pinagkaiba ng dalawa? Simple lang, it's more of the exposure at the same time kung kailan natin makikita yung kanilang mga effects. For example, for acute toxin, this is a result from short-term exposure pero high-level usually. For example, exposed ka sa isang chemical, for example, isang acid at ang produce yung acid na yun mga vapors. And right then and there, uh, pagkalangkap po nung vapors na napansin mo na hilo ka or bigla ka pa, that's actually an example of acute toxicity. So, na ramdaman mo kagad yung effects from that short-term exposure. Sometimes, hindi siya uh, ganun kapilis. Sometimes, it will take hours or days bago, bago natin ang kita yung mismong effect niya. Pero kahit napakaikli lang ng panahon na na-expose ka from the chemicals, it can give off uh, effects. Uh, and usually, mas immediate effects. Yun, na napapansin. Mas mabilis na nagde-detect or nararamdaman yung effects sa mga acute toxins. When we talk about chronic toxins naman, this is actually an injury because of repeated exposure to some toxins. Usually sa mga chronic toxins, sa simula or sa unang exposure mo sa kanya, wala ka masyado mararamdaman epekto or wala kang mararamdaman na epekto. Pero as na-accumulate yung chemicals sa iyong katawan, na-accumulate yung substance sa ating katawan, saka lang siya nagkakaroon ng effect. So, Usually, pagdating sa chronic toxins, hindi siya madaling ma-detect yung kanilang mga effects. Sometimes it takes years bago natin makikita yung effect ng toxin. Pero that will be too late kasi we are being exposed to it repeatedly. So that's your acute and chronic toxins. Now, having the knowledge about chemical toxicity, uh, routes to exposure, and acute and chronic toxins, it's clear now the importance on using 
protective equipments or personal protective equipments or what we call PPEs. Yung ating mga masks, yung ating safety goggles or glasses, yung ating head caps, yung ating mga face shields, yung ating gloves, yung ating laboratory gowns, yung ating mga shoe covers. All of those are actually protective equipment to protect us from these chemical toxins, protect them from entering our body. It's also clear now kung bakit importante din yung pagsunod sa mga safety precautions, yung mga safety guidelines natin sa ating mga workplace or sa laboratory or sa school or kahit saan man. These guidelines are there for us to be protected, for us to be safe. So for our summary, chemical toxicity is the ability of substances to cause damage to living organisms. It can enter the body in different ways and can have different effects. That's the end of the video. And guys, always remember, keep calm and love them. See you on the next video. The kids.